Brendan Royval is coming off the best win of his entire career. He absolutely dismantled former world champion Brandon Moreno. Tatsuro Tyra is coming off of a sketchy knee injury, but he is on an unbelievable run. He is undefeated, and he is one of the best prospects on the planet. We will find out Saturday night which one of these gentlemen worked their way up the ranks and potentially set themselves up for a second or a first title shot. My name is Angelo. This is We Want Picks, and I'm going to give you my bets for UFC Vegas 98. Before we look forward to UFC Vegas 98, let's spend 30 seconds and look back. UFC 307 was a wildly successful card. This was a sketchy card for a lot of people. A lot of people did not do well. And that's because we had a couple of weird decisions, some interesting outcomes, some refing situations. But overall, it was a great card. I hit a whole bunch of dogs. And the only bets I missed were the Kayla Harrison under and Raquel Pennington, who I think was screwed out of a decision. I didn't bet on Jose Aldo, so that outcome didn't matter to me per se. But overall, it was a great night. It was a very successful night. 29% return on investment on all the bets I gave you. And frankly, if you watch this video every single week, I'm pretty sure the last 10 weeks, this video has been profitable. So thank you for the watch. Like, comment, help me out. And if you want to become a premium member to unlock all the bets you don't see, you can do so now. WeWantPicks.com. Click become a member. It's freaking $10 for an entire month. And month is key work because there's a lot of great events coming up. I was able to hit that 29% return on investment because I eat my own dog food. I drink my own champagne. I use the tools that my website offers. At wewantpicks.com, we have a data analyzer. We have a prop hunter. We have a line movement tracker. I watch the lines. I try to beat the lines. I use a data analyzer to do tape study, to look at the stats. I look at a prop hunter to find props that stand out. And I'm going to do that for the next four cards. Here's a look at the four cards you would get. If you go to wewantpicks.com right now and you click become a member, it's only $10. And that $10 is going to unlock UFC Vegas 98, UFC Vegas 99, which is the fluffy versus Pajeda fight, UFC 308, which is one of the best pay-per-views of the entire year, and then UFC Edmonton with the return of Amir Albazi. Phenomenal run for freaking $10. And I have proven to you week in and week out through these videos that we make some money. We want picks.com click become a member at the top for, I show you the bets. Let's talk in generality, some solid favorites, some solid underdogs. I think this is a pretty straightforward card. That's usually when we get our absolute ass handed to us, but it feels like a pretty straightforward card. Ramazan Temerov. He should win. He's being mashed up against CJ Vergara. I love CJ Vergara. CJ Vergara is a ton of fun. Absolute dog, but this is set up this way for a reason. Ramazan should come forward, be the cleaner, faster, more effective striker. He can get CJ in trouble and not let him breathe like previous opponents have. He's a little expensive, but I think he gets it done. Abdul Razak Al Hassan. Sometimes you just got to look at the opponent. I think Abdul is better than Josh Frem literally everywhere. Where is Josh better than Abdul Razak Al Hassan? Like where? I'm I'm waiting. Where? Josh is a pretty well-rounded guy. He's athletic. He might get a couple of takedowns, but I don't know if he will because Abdul Razak Al-Hassan is a very high-level judo practitioner. And you may not know that unless you do research and dig in. You won't know that, but I mean, the first tell is his Instagram handle is judo Razak. What happened was after a lifelong career in judo and learning those skills, he knocks some people out because he's also fast as hell and insanely powerful. So now he's really looking to knock people out. But if it ends up, with some takedown attempts, I think he can toss, and I think he could have some success. I think Abdul Razak Hassan, some of the best value at 163. Clayton Carpenter at minus 204. His opponent's got a scary record. Right? He's 17-1. and one. That's a scary record. But I think Clayton Carpenter is just too good of a grappler, and his opponent gets out grappled. What is Lucas Hocha does, his opponent, he does a good job of like surviving, avoiding being submissions, and then just not quitting, which is great. And you know what? He's a dog, and he'll fight. But I just don't think it's going to matter. I think Clayton Carpenter's control is just too good. And I don't think Lucas is going to have the opportunity to sneak out and try to expose this young prospect. And Temba Garimba, minus 375. I was deciding for this last slot between Chidi and Jakawani and Temba Garimba. Ultimately, I landed on Temba because Chidi has the better opponent. Jared Gooden's dangerous. He's dangerous. And yeah, you can say he's been finished a few times, but he is dangerous. And that could be a problem. So while I do think Chidi wins, I didn't put him on this list and I put Temba instead because I think Temba's just better than Nico Price. 
And I like Nico. He's very exciting. He does a lot of stuff for us, meaning the fans and in his fights. He also just, his family went through a Category 4 hurricane. He lives in Fort Myers or Cape Coral. So I'm sure there was that stress back at home and wondering and worrying and checking in and just, just a lot of factors here. Temba's the better fighter, and I think he gets it done. If we look at some solid underdogs, Alex Morono is one of the least reliable people in the UFC. L literally. He's got all the skills. He's an insanely high-level black belt. But you don't see him use it because he just wants to knock people out. He literally has said that. I just want to stand and bang, which I get. But like, Jesus, dude, come on. But he is very talented. He's good. And if you could trust him to use his actual skills, I would have a ton of money on him. You can't trust them. But I do have a bet on him, but talk about that a little later. Corey McKenna, plus 112. Corey McKenna is another one. She is very talented. Busy striking. Very good wrestling. She'll shoot a double, pick you up, dump you. Corey McKenna is busy. She's in your face. She's very young, so she's improving rapidly. She was just submitted in about five and a half seconds because she decided to wrestle with a multiple-time, multiple-division world champion grappler. So that was a fight IQ mistake. But I think she can win this fight, especially because Julia Palastri, her opponent, had some travel issues this week. Her original flights were canceled. She didn't get in till late. That may affect weight cutting. It may affect psyche. Doesn't have the normal time to settle in and relax. I like Corey McKenna even before that happened, so I still like her here. Brad Tavares, I'm surprised he's not the favorite. He's the better fighter of the two of them. He's the more established fighter. He has the better career, the better resume. Yes, he was knocked out in his last two fights, but his opponent, Jun Young Park, is not a knockout guy. Jun Young Park is not knocking people out. He's grinding. He's pushing forward. He's staying busy. But Brad Tavares has an 81% takedown defense. I think Brad Tavares flat out wins this fight. And then solid odds at him, uh, plus 165, plus 175 if you go to bet openly. If you don't know what bet openly is, it's peer-to-peer. It's -peer. They're not a sports book. So you're going to get better odds every time because they don't care if you win or lose. Sports books need to beat you. The only way they stay in business and keep the lights on is because the majority of the population sucks at this. So they take the money. Bet openly doesn't care. It's me versus you. If I win, I get your money. If you win, you get my money. They just take 1% from the winner to keep the lights on. Brandon Royval in the main event. Controversial take. People hate this. Dude, I have people writing dissertations in the comment section. Somebody called me a hypocrite because I said Umar Namagamadov wins against Corey Sanhagen. And in this fight, I'm saying that Brandon Royval wins because Brandon Royval has fought the better competition and Tatsuro Tyra is untested. So the dots that this absolute lunatic who writes nine paragraph comments connected were, well, Umar didn't have a lot of experience and you picked him and Tatsuro, and I get the hips move like this. I'm positive the hips moving like this when he's typing. And Corey Sanhagen had more experience and you didn't pick him. First of all, wild connections to make. Umar Namagamadov had way better wins. Way better wins than Tatsuro Retire. It's not even close. And yes, if you look at some of those names, they have since left the UFC. But when he fought them three, four years ago, that was not the case. He also smoked Hani Barcelos when Hani Barcelos was very good. Multiple time, five time national champion wrestler. Smoked that dude with strikes. We, the last name is a factor. The country of origin is a factor. Those are such wild connections to the dots to connect. It makes no, and to write five paragraphs and be angry about it is insane. Be a human. You want to disagree, disagree. I get it. And you know what? I might have a ton of egg on my face if Tatsuro Tyra comes in here and smokes Brandon Roy Val, which might happen. We just don't know. We don't know. Who has he beaten? Alex Perez in a freak injury after losing the first round. And before you guys say, I already saw the comments and you're wrong. Well, that was on purpose. Tatsuro Tyra, that was his technique. That wasn't a free... No, he said himself with his own mouth into the microphone. He said, I didn't do that on purpose. I climbed on his back and his knee bent. He said that. So freak injury. The win against Carlos Candelario. Where's he? Not in the UFC. The Edgar Chavez win. He almost got guillotined in that fight and he got dropped. Like, yes, he's undefeated and he's winning. But the point I'm making here is he's not proven. You know who is proven? Brandon Royval coming off the best fight of his career. Beating a former multiple-time world champion in a rematch. That's a long rant. And boom. I bet money on Brandon Royval for those reasons. I think he wins this fight. And tell you what, you're going to get way better odds than I got. Way better. I got a plus 170. 
And I, I'm obviously, listen, I, I might be wrong. I've been wrong. We've all been wrong. You've been wrong. I've been, everybody's been wrong. Nobody picks at 100%. That's insane. You know, if you pick at 60%, you're like pretty good at this. If you pick at 70%, you're a genius. So there's just some context before you start blasting one wrong pick. Also, I went 11 and one last week and got the same hate for a couple of those picks. So grow up. Brandon Roy Val, plus 170. You're going to get better odds today. All the reasons I just mentioned. He's just, he's the more dangerous of the two. He has fought the best fighters on planet earth at that weight class. He lost to Pantoja, the current champion. He was taken down nine times and landed way more significant strikes. He's an absolute cardio machine. He can snatch things up in scrambles, get creative on his feet. We haven't seen Tatsuro Tyra get pushed. We haven't seen him in five rounds. We haven't seen him beat anybody that has any sort of number next to their name, let alone top five, 10, or 15. Meanwhile, Brandon Royval is fighting the best on planet Earth. Number one, number two, beat number two. It's crazy. The odds are crazy. Listen, Tatsuro Tyra might be that guy. He's undefeated. That's the problem with undefeated fighters. You don't have a fight to go to where you saw they lost and how they... So he might be the next big thing. He might be. He's only 24 years old. But for now, I just got to go with what I know. And what I know is Brandon Royval is an absolute dog. Abdul Razak Al-Hassan. Talked about it earlier. He's just, his opponent's not good. Simple. Minus 155 half a unit there. I think he gets it done. The, that value went the other way. I didn't get as good a value on Brandon as I could have. And I got better value on Abdul Razak Al-Hassan as you're going to get today. Hafa Garcia inside the distance decision, no action. Plus 160. I do not, like, if there's a finish in this fight, it's not going to be on the Grant Dawson side. The guy, he doesn't finish anything. He leaves food on his plate. He can't finish anything. So he's definitely not going to finish a dog in Hafa Garcia, an experienced, dangerous dog in Hafa Garcia. If there is a finish, it's on the Hafa Garcia side. That's why I don't like the round line. And I, I was debating the guy that handles our website, Web Guy Josh, and the under two and a half is like plus two something. Hafa Garcia went inside the distance decision no action is plus 160. I said I prefer the plus 160 because I get a refund. The most likely outcome here is Grant Dawson wins a decision. That's the most likely outcome. And if that is the outcome, I get a refund on this bet. But if Hafa Garcia finishes the fight, which of the two of them, he's the one that's most likely to finish, I'll get paid out at plus 160. So the reason I like that more than the under on the round is because I don't think the under on the round hits. This is just a very safe bet where I get a full refund if I want it. That's all this is. Then we have Chidi Injikawani and Temba Garimo. I parlayed two guys that I'm very confident in, and I got plus money for it. Very simple. Temba Garimo is much better. Not much. But Temba Garimo is better than Nico Price. He's just more skilled than Nico. Nico's a dog. He'll get in your face, and maybe he'll break Temba. But we've seen Temba in some fights where he keeps his composure. He's a pretty mentally sound guy that you can trust. Chidi Injikawani, dangerous as shit. Now he's fighting another dangerous guy. But I do think Chidi gets it done, and we're going to get plus money on that bet. Then I got a couple of premium bets. The rest of these are premium. Got a nice prop bet, plus 110. Didn't put a ton on it, but it's a bet that I like very, very much. And we got a bunch of other premium bets, one and a half units worth of premium bets in the safety parlay. It hit last week, plus money safety parlay this week. Overall, I've got a little less than five units out the door. I'll return more than 10, so ROI of over 100% here. And if you're looking at the unit numbers and conservative Ange, that's just who I am, conservative Ange when it comes to the betting. And it's funny because my recap video for UFC 307, I picked Court McGee. I bet on Court McGee at plus 195, and he looked like a minus 200 in that fight. And the caption, if you've never seen a recap video, I recap every single fight, my, what I thought of those fights, how it went. And I put a caption. I have an image of the fight and a caption. The caption of the fight is, why am I such a pussy? And that's because I only bet $25 on him, a quarter of a unit. And I am a little, little scaredy cat sometimes. But the reality is, six of the last seven events, or six of the last, like, what is it? I think it's six of the last seven. I'm up money. And slow and steady, for me, wins the race. And if you want a little more zhuzh, some better odds, you want things a little riskier? Jakey Boy is your man. He tends to have more plus money bets. He tends to do the longer parlays. He tends to do all of the other things that I don't. And that's why we're a healthy balance. And you should take a look at both of our bets and just decide what you like and what you don't like and go from there. Don't, what you should not do is look at our bets, disagree entirely with it, 
and then place it anyway. What you should do is look at it, decide what, you know, yeah, I, I could see this. That, you, know, that, you know what? That makes sense. I'm, I'm going to take a shot. Angelo's been on a heater. I'm going to take a shot. Or like, listen, it, it, it ain't it. I'm positive Tatsu Retire is going to win. If that's the case, don't then bet Brandon Royval because I said so. Yes, sometimes I'll be right. Sometimes I won't. So just use this as a guide. And if you do just want to, like, listen, I'm not going to do any. I'm just going to blindly tail. And you're up long term, so I'll be up long term. You're up short term, so I'll be up short term. That's fine, too. But what I will not tolerate is I was 100% positive this was going to happen. And you convinced me otherwise. This is what I do with my money. Your money ain't my money, pal. He's got Patty Sabs. He's very confident Pat Sabatini wins this fight. Very confident. He thinks it's going to be a grappling match and Pat's the better grappler. One and a half units at plus 115. Julia Palastri, minus 130. A little less than a unit on that. And again, he just thinks that she's better than Corey McKenna. He placed his bet before she had travel issues, but I don't think it really matters or affects his opinion. Jakey Boy's got 6.2 units on the board already. Already. 6.2 6.2 units on the board. This is being filmed before all the prop bets, before the weigh-ins, and before some of those other pieces. So I imagine this number will go up. He's got a solid parlay at plus 180, another prop bet at plus 175, and a whole bunch of other bets that I totaled up there for you. If you do want to check out all of my bets, all of his bets, all the tools, everything, it's freaking $10 for an entire month. We want picks.com. Click become a member at the top. And before we go here, check out Bet Openly. They have the best odds. And I know sports books aren't legal in every state, right? You have the DraftKings, the FanDuel's of the world. They're not legal ever. I live in Texas. I cannot use DraftKings or FanDuel. I have to use offshore sports books like Bet Online, and in many cases, Bet Openly, because Bet Openly is going to give me better odds. It's just better odds because it's human versus human, person versus person. They don't care who wins or loses, and because they don't care who wins or loses, they don't need to build in the profitability on the bet. They just charge a one percent fee to the winner. You win $100, you get $99, they keep one. And that's so that they can run the website and get people in touch with each other. So you can check them out. You can do the anti-lock of the week when Jacob lets you know who his lock of the week is. Well, that bet's up there. Grab the other side and the lock of the week loses, you win. Same same situation with the safety parlay. They also have UFC props and finish bets on there as well. You can check them out at wewantpicks.com slash betopenly. Here's the four cards I've been saying. It's $10 a month. Don't be a cheap bastard. Support us so we can continue to do what we do. Well, here's the four events you're going to get for that $10. You know there's people out there charging $100 a month who suck? We're charging $10 a month. And not only is it all the picks and bets, which have been great, but tools, a whole suite of tools. And you're going to get every single one. We don't do tiers. No like, oh, fantasy stuff is at this price point. No, no tiers. Everything for $10. You're going to get UFC Vegas 98, UFC Vegas 99, UFC 308, which is a spectacular card, and the return of Amir Albazi at UFC Edmonton. Check it all out now. Become a premium member. And don't forget, if you want 50 bucks, I'll send you 50 bucks. We have affiliate deals with most of the offshore sports books. Go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. Use the link to sign up, make a deposit. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you. It's affiliate marketing. It's that simple. They're going to pay me. I'm going to slice it off. I'm going to give it to you. So if you're in a state, that doesn't really have the local sports betting, go use Bet Online. Go use my bookie. Go use BetUS. They're going to give you bonuses and free money when you sign up. And Bet Online is going to have the biggest, largest array of prop bets you're going to get anywhere. We on picks.com slash bets. Good luck this weekend. It feels like a pretty straightforward card, but we know how those go sometimes.